Hello and welcome to the first part of this um, sending an email with PHP and an HTML form tutorial. I really have to think of a better name for that. But um, yeah, basically I just have this empty HTML page now here, which is this index.php page, the only page we'll be working with. And as you can see, it's just totally blank right now. Just have my title up in the top and my validated HTML page. So, first things first, we're going to start off just by coding out the form that we're going to be using. So, in the HTML body, we'll open up our form tag, give it the method of post, and action will be a uh, blank string because that means that it'll submit to this page, which is what we want, since everything's working on the same page. Um, then we are going to uh, start putting in the fields. Now, in order to label the fields, I'm going to use label tags. Um, if you've never used one before, it's basically a label. And then it takes the for attribute, and you give the uh, for the value. And this value has to match up to the ID of an input. So I'll show you what I mean in a sec. Um, and then in between the two tags, you put the text you want to appear in front of the input, and then uh, the next tag will be our input. And so that would be input type. Um, it'll be text in this situation because we just want it to be a simple text box. The ID is going to be subject because this right here has to match up to this. And then the name will equal subject as well. And that is because um, that's what we want PHP to recognize it as. Uh, and then we'll go our next label and this label will be for the sending email so sender and the label again and um, then I'll have your email for the text and so on input type will be the same except with the different uh, values for the ID and name those will both be sender or input type text Oops. ID sender name sender and so on throughout these all of or for all of these um, fields. So the next one is receiver and we'll end that there. And then we'll give it receiver's email. Um, <coughs> input type again we'll just have as a text. I'll take this time to um, note that you do not actually need all of these fields to be in the HTML form. Um, what I mean by that is, for instance, if you're using this to send um, to an email list of sorts, you're the admin of a site and um, you want it to send to all of the people who have subscribed to your email list, then you won't necessarily need your sender email, right? As you can provide that as a constant or as a variable located elsewhere in the script. Um, this is just to show you everything that the PHP function requires to send mail and uh, just in the most basic of sorts. This is just to give you a structure that you can then work from. So finally the label is going to be, the last label will be for body and we'll just have message as the text and then we'll break down and this is going to be a text area. Um, so text area, uh, the first we'll give it the ID of body, um, we'll give it the name of body, and then we're just going to provide columns, which is COLS, and that is going, we're going to give it 100 columns, which is the amount of space it goes across on the horizontal, and then rows, which is the number of rows on the vertical, we'll just give it 20, and unlike the um, actual input tags, this requires you to end the tag with an actual ending tag. If you wanted to provide it a starting value, it would go in between these two um, right there. So that's that for the HTML form. Actually, it is not. Um, we need to have our input type for submit. So we need our submit button. And we're going to give you that the value of send email. And that is a self-ending tag as well. 
and then we need to break or put a line break after each of these tags just for simple formatting pleasures. Hmm. Line breaks. Anyways, um, so now that is your HTML form done. So we'll save that. And if you reload the page, um, you can see this form. It's what I was using before. And just the upside to using labels is if I click on this subject right here, it selects the subject box. If I click on receiver email, it um, does that. So that is the upside to using labels just over regular um, text. So back to the editor and we'll start the PHP now. So the first thing that we want to do is check to make sure that the post data has been set. So we're going to use an if and then is set and we're just going to enter all of the post fields that we've used. So post and subject is our first one. Subject right there. And it just takes a comma separated list. So the next one will be post sender and then post um, receiver and post body for your text area body. And if this has been set, we want to do what's in the code. Sorry, that does need that bracket um, block here. And if it hasn't been set, then it's just going to display this page. Um, we're not going to do anything special. Next, we are going to get on to the validation of each of these input types, or input fields rather. The first one we're going to validate is subject, so I'll just comment that there, validate subject. Um, so first things first, we're going to make sure that it's not an empty string, and we're just going to use the empty function for that. So if empty, um, post subject, and this will basically make sure that it actually has a value that is not an empty string or that's not null or an empty array, that sort of thing. So if this returns true, it means that there actually is no value provided with it, in which case we want to make an error. The error way that I'm going to be using, as I have done in previous videos, is uh, with our errors array. So basically we're going to store every error that happens in this array and that um, in the body. We're going to make checks to see if there are any. If there are, we're going to provide them in a list. That should make a little bit more sense later if it doesn't now. So we're just going to say, please provide a valid, or no, we're not going to. We're going to, that's our email message. We're going to please, please enter an email, or an email, a subject. So it doesn't need to be, ah, sorry, I can't talk or type today. Please enter a subject. And that's actually the only check that we're going to be doing for um, our subject. I mean, you can enter other types of checks to make sure, oops, we don't need errors there, don't know what I'm doing. Um, you can provide other sorts of checks to make sure the string length is below or above whatever you want it to be. I'm just only for basic purposes testing if it is um, empty. If it is, then we're going to define the subject variable and we're going to have that equal to HTML entities of uh, the posted subject. Basically that provides a little bit of security so that if the form fails they can't um, get access to the rest of our code by providing an HTML entity, something like that, where it would end the form field and the rest of the stuff would be provided as plain text, which it's just added security measures. I'll probably do a video tutorial on security um, later, but that's just a good habit to get into whenever it is uh, form data that can potentially be um, accessed in that sense. Uh, the next thing that we're going to do is validate the sending email. Um, so again, our first check will be the empty, which is the same as up there only we're obviously going to use it on post sender. Um, so if that's empty we'll provide a similar er error. Um, so we'll go errors and we'll just say please enter your valid email address. So let's say that that doesn't help or uh, return true. We're going to do an else if statement. Else 
if and the next thing we're going to check is the string length so str len string length of post sender and um, this check is a little bit pointless but it's it's more to show you how you could use it with a subject or your body or that sort of thing because I'm not providing checks on either of those but also because um, obviously you want them to provide valid email uh, for the most part and so we're just going to check and I believe the maximum characters for an email is something like 347 or something insanely high I mean no one's gonna have an email that long but just for technicality's sake we'll check to see if it's greater than 347 just to um it's more about the concept of working with these things than the actual errors themselves so um, if that's true then we're gonna just say that your email is too long please provide your valid email address and in these errors I'm stressing to provide a valid email address but however with the PHP function you do not actually need to supply it a valid email address in order for it to work um, it can take a fake email address and it's actually been used a lot more frequently nowadays to um, spam people email or to uh, send them malicious content so like you could have an admin at youtube.com and you can send an email from that email address and so people are like oh well it's from the admin of YouTube and they check it and they end up giving up their YouTube information or that sort of thing and it's so just be careful I guess is what I'm saying and please don't use this for malicious content yourself it's such a nice language you don't need to be rude about it um, but yeah back to this we're gonna have another else if Oh, and the reason I'm using else if opposed to just if that and then another if statement is that way it only will ever provide one error for each um, validation, which is a lot nicer than having a total of like 20 errors down in a list if that's how many checks you end up doing. Um, that way this error will only ever be provided if this error is not. And so on throughout this entire statement of things. So. Um, this uh, check is going to take use of the filter underscore bar function. What this does is it performs a regular expression on um, whatever you provide it and it makes sure that it has certain qualities about it. So we're going to be using the post sender and um, the second parameter of this function takes a constant this in this case filter underscore validate underscore email there is a third optional parameter which we do not need um, in this situation but basically this just makes sure that the email has um, the necessary things in email so a single at symbol a dot something or other that sort of thing um, it doesn't actually provide or check to make sure that it's a um, valid email address in the sense that uh, it's registered on a server but it's a basic check just using a regular expression that we don't have to uh, put ourselves through so if that returns true or so we have to check and see if that is false because that will return true if it is fine as an email so if that returns false we are going to say please provide a valid email address and that is the last check for this um, validate or to validate the sender email so finally we're going to say else and then errors or not errors sorry we're going to have email equal to the HTML entities of post sender now the mail function that we're going to be using in PHP, I'm jumping ahead so that I can um, explain this to you, uh, takes four parameters. The uh, first is the email you're sending it to, the second is the subject, the third is the body of the email, and the fourth is optional, or is headers. Uh, now they say that the headers are optional headers, however, 
um, there is one that's required, and that is the from header. So uh, that's obviously the email address that this uh, is being received from. And so um, we have just validated what that will be. However, we need to provide it in um, a sense that it, in, in, in the way that the function requires it to be sent in. Now, what I mean is that um, some email clients require emails to be in right and left angle brackets, so then your email at email.com is there. So basically what we're going to be doing is um, this will be your fourth parameter, but we just want to make sure that we put these on either side because all email hosts support that, but I do not believe that all of them support it when it's like this. So um, just to work around that, we are going to just uh, concatenate on either side of this those right and left angle brackets. So um, we're going to be doing that for the receiving email too. However, we're not there yet. So that is the sending email. I'm going to end this part now before it gets too long. And if you join me in the next part of this tutorial, we will validate the body and the receiving email and then send the message. Uh, thanks for watching. Please join me in the next part.